I guess we can get straight into it because that's why you're here. So with the M4 MacBook Air, I was able to get around 80 tracks in Logic Pro. But with the M5 MacBook Pro, the result is about 95 tracks before I get the system overload message and using the same testing project on these two Macs. So in that instance, it shows that the M5 MacBook Pro is about 20% faster compared to the M4 MacBook Air variant, at least in that case. And in Ableton, I get similar results, about 72 tracks with the M4 MacBook Air and with the M5 MacBook Pro in the same sort of testing suite, it gives me a roughly 89 tracks in the same testing projects. So in uh, Ableton, actually, the performance was almost over 23% faster compared to the M4 MacBook Air variant uh, in this particular test. If you are wondering the settings and all of that, I have a link below this video to uh, the project and uh, some information and a table of results from other Macs, so you can check that out. Uh, this test is uh, 512 buffer size, I think, and it's uh, 48 kilohertz but uh, take a look uh, below the video if you want more information or if you want to run the project yourself and compare it see if you get the same results so why am i comparing the m5 to the m4 which is in the macbook air well it's because the first m5 that is released now is the base model m5 cpu and the m4 in the macbook air is also the base model m4 so it's the it's the base model CPU on each generation. I think it's interesting to just put them against each other and see what the improvements are. It has the same amount of performance cores. So that's four performance cores and six efficiency cores. But there are some other interesting improvements on the M5 over the M4. The graphics are significantly faster on the M5 actually. It has a third generation ray tracing engine, neural accelerator in every GPU core, which the M4 doesn't have, uh, but it also have a higher memory bandwidth, which actually helps on performance. So it has 153 gigabytes or it's gigabits, well, at least GB <laughs> per second versus uh, 120, which is on the M4. So 153 M5, 120 on the M4. Music production wise, I mean, if I had to have buy a Mac today and my budget is slashed, I just don't have anything and I have to get a laptop, not a desktop, I would perhaps consider this M5. But I think you should hold on for a little bit there because you can actually get the M4 Pro for a bit more. Uh, and uh, the M4 Pro actually starts with eight performance cores. Well, why is this interesting? Well, if, it's, if you use Logic and Ableton, Logic and Ableton uses performance cores. So with the M4 Pro, we will see a significant uh, rise in performance compared to the M5. So that's useful to know if you need something right now. And if you use Logic and Ableton, you have to sort of know these things. And the link I have below shows spreadsheets where you can see that type of performance. So that will be much better for Ableton and Logic. But uh, yeah, that's because they are not using the efficiency course which we have six of in this uh, base CPU. And I mean, if you use Reaper or Cubase, can use uh, the efficiency course as well. But another interesting thing with the M5 is that the storage speed has increased significantly. So if we compare the M5 MacBook Pro and you can see here and the M4 MacBook Air, you can see that the M5 is significantly faster on the internal storage. It's almost double the speed compared to the uh, M4 MacBook Air. So this means you will get better performance on the M5 disk performance, that is, if you use a lot of sample based instruments, which has files it has to read to and from disk. I mean, uh, for example, heavy contact libraries, native instrument stuff, they are all a lot of sample storage heavy stuff. And you know, orchestral libraries, things like that will benefit from uh, faster disk speed. So that's also something to take into consideration when you are going to choose a Mac for music production. Uh, upgrading the internal storage on a Mac, that's always expensive from Apple. It's too expensive in my opinion. That's why I use an external uh, Thunderbolt SSD like this. This one is from Psyche, something I got for free, by the way, full disclosure. You can just 
pop out the SSD and buy another one, buy like a four terabyte one on your favorite computer store and you have upgraded storage for a significant smaller price compared to what you get from Apple. But uh, now when this internal disk speed is so much higher uh, on the uh, Apple delivered SSDs, I think uh, upgrading the SSD when you buy a Mac from Apple directly from Apple, it makes that choice a little bit easier because you get so much better performance. And uh, bringing uh, something like this with you is, I know it's a little bit ha, ha, annoying, but not that annoying in my opinion. It's actually, I think it's better to use something like this on a desktop Mac like my Mac Studio because I don't have to unplug it all the time. It can just say plugged in, but let's say with a laptop, which you move around a lot, you have to sort of unmount it so you don't uh, get corrupted files, stuff like that. So I think it's more useful to upgrade the internal drive on a laptop instead of, uh, let's say, a desktop device. But that's my opinion. So the testing results you saw in the beginning of this video, that's basically testing the CPU in uh, the machine. So it's not so much testing the disk speed and memory. And before you ask me to test memory, I have done that on my channel. So you can check out the video that pops up here or uh, the link in the description, I will have it there as well. I have done some memory tests in DOS and uh, maybe you don't really need that much memory as you think you do. At some point, obviously, <laughs> Apple will release the M5 Pro and the M5 Max, maybe the M5 Ultra, but uh, if we look at how they have done it before, maybe it's going to be the M4 Ultra, I'm not sure. But we don't know yet, maybe it will be the end of this year or next year, uh, but uh, we also don't know how many performance versus efficiency cores it's going to get. We know that Apple have sort of dabbled a little bit in this before, changed it and just moved it around or something like that. But I would assume that we would see an M5 Pro, which starts at probably eight performance cores. So in that case, you can, if you want to wait for an M5 Pro, I mean Mac mini or a laptop, in that case, you can essentially double the CPU results or the track results you see in this video, I think. But again, that's just speculation from my part, but I think that's basically uh, what you would expect. Personally, I am impressed, really impressed with the performance of the base M5. Haven't tested the graphic that much yet. I'm going to actually try to edit this video on it. Yeah, I'm going to actually try using this laptop for my only device here on this channel for music production and uh, video editing and all of that until Apple releases a Mac Studio based on the M5 Max or maybe the Ultra. So it means like I have to, um, I do videos on this channel where I'm s sort of asking if the low, is this low level Mac going to be good for music production, but I don't actually use it that much for music production myself. Basically, if I go to the cabin or something like that, but th this time I want to actually try to use it for myself and see how it works. And I think it's going to work just fine, actually. But that means I have to sell the M3 Mac M3 Ultra Mac Studio and the M4 MacBook Air as well. And hopefully someone here in Norway wants to buy it. So if you live in Norway, uh, you can ask me or uh, hopefully I don't lose that much money on it. So I do actually create music on my uh, Macs. So I'm not only talking about it. You can check out links to places where you can find my music in the description below. And I'm also going to make a video showing a real project on the M5 as well in Ableton, uh, I guess, and not only benchmarks, which you sort of you have seen in this video, but that's going to be another video. So uh, you can stay subscribed for that. What you should get, I get questions in the comments. A lot of you are asking me what my Mac should I buy? And hopefully these videos can uh, help you make a decision because I can't make a decision for you. So it's ultimately up to you. I mean, if you need something today, you don't really need, uh, need a lot of performance, a ton of performance. The M5 is a really good choice. It's a really good all round laptop for a lot of stuff, but also a really good choice is the M4 Pro in either the 14 inch, the Mac mini, the 16 inch, which has 
eight performance cores and up. And especially, again, if you use Logic or Ableton. And I mean, you can't get the M5 in the Mac Mini yet, but uh, I think it's right around the corner. So yeah, good machine. And uh, I think that's basically it for this video. If you want to know more, I have links in the description below, again, to the project I've been uh, testing and uh, some spreadsheets and information about other Macs and how many tracks it's been able to play. So check that out and uh, stay subscribed for other stuff coming up. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.